Hello my lovely ravens, welcome back to my channel, my name is Chantel and today I am going to create some chairs based on a template by Aira from Bentley House Minis. She put out a video on this pattern and I will link that in the description box below. Obviously Aira and I are friends so she knows that I'm doing this because I might alter it a little bit depending on what the first chair looks like. So I'm going to cut out all these pieces first, then get the foam board, the thick paper and everything that I need, follow along with the video and create a chair. So let's go. All right, making miniatures is always fun, but cutting a lot of them in one go is a little bit tedious, but I did it. We've got the foam board part and we've got the cardboard parts. I do have some fabrics here. Uh, so I have this, this is actually from a Harry Potter uh, fabric bundle that I got a while ago. I have this velvety stuff. It's not really velvety stuff. It looks a little bit like carpet. I have this table runner fabric that I can probably use or even the curtain stuff which is really pretty. Now I also have some batting, some quilt batting that Aira said I should use in the video. So I'm going to use this one as well. The thing I'm going to change with this pattern is I'm going to add tufting and I also want to add some detailing to the um, to the front of the chairs uh, but we'll see how we go and um, let's just glue it together and make some chairs okay first thing we do is glue these three foam pieces together And the reason for me using this mat, it's a Tom Holtz mat. You can also get Teflon mats for like a barbecue, anti-stick mats. And um, the hot glue doesn't stick once it's dry. So the bottom of the chair will be a part D, which is this part that I'm going to glue on to the bottom. There we have it, it's done, it's a chair. And then underneath this, I'm going to glue another part D, so it's the thicker, a thicker base for the chair. And there is the extra base of the chair. And apparently now we're already onto the upholstery, which is really, really fast. Uh, yeah. But she does it in such an easy way that it's just easier to do it this way than what I've ever done for my chairs in the past. So she uses tacky glue. You can use tacky glue. I'm going to use this uh, Fabri-Tac glue. It's just my go-to glue for anything fabric related. glue that on top and then cut away the excess. There we have one side and I'm just gonna do the other side as well. So next up is covering the back and the front here and then the sides of the armchair.
you gotta admit, there's something about tiny armchairs that is just adorable. You kind of want to shrink yourself down and get into it. The next part is adding the fabric. So I've taken this star fabric. Not sure if this chair is going to make it into the common room, but we shall see. I'm just practicing now. Cut that to size of the back of the chair. There we have that. And then Aira says to first glue the side. I'm gonna grab my Fabri-Tac glue and wrap that around like so. I'm tucking the undersides. And then the top she says to, if I can still pull it over because I didn't get enough <laughs> fabric there. Just tug a little bit, it will be fine. To stick that down with uh, hot glue. And then tuck in these corners as well as you can, basically. I'm gonna grab my tweezers for this. That's as good as it gets for this part. Next is the piece of the front. So I'm just gonna put glue here. Then you need to kind of push this in and like Aira says, manipulate the fabric until you get it where you want it to be. I'll put some glue here on the chair. Push this down. Some glue on the sides. And just gonna put glue around here. There we have the front of the chair covered. I'm making a hem so that it can overlay here, just by sticking down, sticking it down with some tacky glue. You can also do this on a sewing machine, of course. Then gluing that on the side, with the hem facing this way. You've got the hem sitting there. And cutting around the edges, leaving about half an inch, because that needs to fold around. And when where it pleats in, this is where I'm going to cut in to all meet the chair, so it has some room to move. And because we're gonna cover the front anyway, this part doesn't need to be fully covered. It just needs to kind of touch. And I'm just gonna cover the inside with glue and the front. I'm just pulling on the pieces of fabric and gluing them down. And there we have one side covered. I am actually really liking this pattern. I only have a little bit left just for this chair, but um, I really like the stars. I have covered all the sides with the fabric and I have made the part E with three layers of the quilt bedding and I've cut away a little bit here so it's like indented so it looks used and then on the backing part F I've layered three layers as well and I'm running out of fabric but I really want to use this fabric so I'm going to wrap it around like so and then hope for the best <laughs> that I can just tuck this in here and when the side parts which are these parts come against it I won't be able to see anything of that fraying so let's try that I'm gonna go ahead and glue that on and then I'm going to do the tufting so there we have it it's not the prettiest on the bottom and I only just got the back, but that's okay. As long as the front is done, that's the most important bit. And seriously, this is the only leftovers I have from this fabric because I didn't start with a full piece of fabric. It was just a leftover from a mask I made. We have all these pieces now. I suppose I can go ahead and glue these side parts in. But this back part still needs to have something done. So actually it is first the back part and then the side parts. That's that's right. The back part I still need to do something with. So 
I'll show you what it would look like when everything is in. And it doesn't matter that that fabric didn't completely reach on the sides. I think I have to trim it a little bit, this one, because it's, uh, it's a little bit sticking out a little bit. Might have been my cutting, by the way. And this one goes in here. And then we nearly have a chair, which is so, so cool. Doesn't that look awesome? It's just that I need to cover this part up still to tidy that up, make the bottom and some legs. But I'm really happy with what this is looking like. So let's just trim off a little bit of the back here, which is okay because it is tucked in anyway. We'll cut all the way to the top just in case. Yeah, that's a little bit better. That sits a little bit more snug now. I think the rest is fine. So, um, yes, let's do the tufting on this thing. Let me show you how I do that. So on the template, I measured out where I wanted the tuft stitches, tuft stitches to be. So I'm going to make 10 in total. And then with a the punch tool, this is one um, uh, 16th of an inch. I believe, um, punch tool by Fiskars. Uh, I punched it on the template that I put on cardboard. And now I can just overlay that on here and put that in with a pencil. And then I have the exact measurements. So what I did was I went an in, uh, one and a half centimeters in from the sides and then one and a half centimeters up from the bottom and then measure that out like that. So I'm going to mark that on the other cardboard, punch holes and then do some stitching. So I've done the markings and now with that same tool you can actually punch that hole all the way through to the, through the fabric like so. And for this one I'm going to use little buttons so I've chosen to go for white beads. So the first thing I did is glued the first bit of the thread on the back and poked it through the hole. I'm going to bead a bead. Put the needle back through. And we have a button right there. It's very hard to see, but I'll do them all. And then you'll see a little bit better. There's the second one. So I'm going to continue that and then I'll be back very, very soon with the result. This is all done now and I'm going to put everything together. Because this blue fabric is a non-fraying fabric, I'm just going to cut a strip and glue it at the front here, like so. There we go, one side done. I really like this effect and it saved me from having to glue fabric on a piece of paper and then applying it. So um, yeah, I'm really happy with that. And it breaks the pattern, so love this. This is how I made one chair. For the feet, I used little beads, which ties it all together. But yes, this is how I made one chair, but I made a few more and they all still need fabric, but I'm going to do that off camera. Now I'm going to end the video. However, some of you might have noticed that in the last few videos, there have been hidden letters. Yes, they are for something. And that something is going to be revealed in the very last video where I'm going to do a giveaway the last video in the series of the Ravenclaw common room. So you all have to wait for that to happen. For now, I'm going to thank you all for watching. Stay safe. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye everyone.